summers ago, MontanaSports.com and MTN Sports started the MT Top, a look at some of the best athletes in Montana's history. We, of course, started on the boys' basketball courts, moved to the girls' basketball courts last summer, and we sprinkled in some wrestlers in between. This summer, it's on to football, the MT Top 40, where for the next eight weeks, we'll introduce you to some of the best ever to step foot on the gridiron. The only criteria, you had to have played your high school football in Montana, whether that be one year or perhaps all four. Then anything after that is up for grabs. We'll go eight weeks long, eight different position groups. We'll sprinkle in some special teamers and we'll probably drop down to the Class C eight-man and six-man ranks as well. But we kickstart things off in the month of July with the defensive backs, number five, all the way up to number one starting Monday through Friday. We'll toss in some honorable mentions as well. And we get things started on the eastern side of Montana with former Baker and Montana Grizzly standout, Shan Schillinger. Schillinger, of course, played for his uncle Don Schillinger up there with Baker in the early 2000s. And how about three Class B state championships in four years, a 49-1 record for the Spartans. That lone loss coming against Fort Benton, the battles the Longhorns and Spartans had back in the early 2000s. Shan Schillinger, a letter winner in football, basketball, track and field throughout high school, and he had a pair of All-State honors on the football field where he was a two-way starter and as a senior, passing for 1,059 yards and 15 touchdowns, then 650 more yards and 14 scores on the ground. He played in both the Montana East-West Shrine game as well as the Knights of Columbus Badlands Bowl before eventually heading west to the University of Montana. Chandler was a good player. I mean, he had the great quickness. He had the skills, those type of things. Uh, he was a kid that studied the game. He, he was one that was at practice with us when he was, you know, knee-high to a grasshopper. Um, always on the bench, whether it had been when we were coaching basketball or football or whatever it is, he's just a gym rat. And so he understood the game, so things came fairly easy for him. I guess he'd recognize things and he could always put himself ahead of the action. Shan was very quick and agile, but Shan was smart. And uh, he, uh, he, of course, was great for uh, when he had uh, scouting uh, teams and so on. Uh, he, he was going to be at the right place at the right time because he recognized the formations, and of course Coach Breitbach was his uh, defensive back coach at the time and uh, got him lined out and, uh, and a coordinator, and uh, Chan made big plays, and uh, I was a member of the state championship game when he was a senior. Also, uh, we didn't use him on specialty teams that much, but run back the opening kickoff against Fort Benton for touchdown. So Chan was special and uh, always uh, be a uh, uh, highlight of uh, some of our Baker uh, career. Schillinger missed out on his opening year at UM with a leg injury, but appeared in all 14 games in 2006, then broke into the starting lineup as a junior in 2008. And he actually tied for the team lead in interceptions with four and forced fumbles with two. Schillinger earning second team all Big Sky accolades for his season. He was then a first team all conference selection his senior year, 90 tackles, four interceptions, and throughout his career in Missoula, the Grizzlies went 51-6, and six, twice advancing to the FCS National Championship game. Schillinger's career ended with 257 career tackles and 10 interceptions. After college, he was selected in the sixth round of the 2010 NFL Draft, taken by the Atlanta Falcons, spent four years pro, playing in 37 games and registering 19 total tackles, and then he became Coach Schillinger. One-year stint at Dickinson State, then the University of Nebraska, and of course, Shan the Man has been with the University of Montana, right now coaching safeties since 2016. He was a gym rat. He, he was somebody who was always around, uh, from handing out gear when he was four years old, probably, to you know the time he got to play. When it was time for people to go through agilities, he was doing agilities with them you know, as a young one. He would even demonstrate you know, as a fourth, fifth grader uh, to my older ones how to, how to get through some of that stuff. Uh, so he was just always around. Um, as far as studying the game, watching a game, he, he's one that would go to a game and observe. He just wouldn't be there to ding around. He, he would watch and see what was going on. We could go to many games and he and his dad travel a lot to college games and to other games, area games, whether it be to Terry or um, those types of games. So he, he was at games all the time. Obviously it's an honor. Um, there's probably a lot more deserving guys than me, but uh, it's really honored a lot of great players that have come through this uh, university and a lot of ones that I looked up to and learned from. A lot of great players I, was le I learned from, but obviously an honor to be chosen one of them. Um, this place has a lot of hit tradition and history, so it's pretty neat to be chosen one of the guys. And then um, just my time uh, 
was remarkable. Uh, I was fortunate to play for Coach Houck. We won a lot of games and uh, a lot of great memories with uh, a lot of my teammates who are now a lot of my great friends. So uh, one of the best decisions I made was to come play football at the University of Montana and opened up a lot of doors for me moving forward. Tune in again to MontanaSports.com on Tuesday and all the rest of the week as we continue counting down the best defensive backs in Treasure State history. Of course, Friday will unveil number one and your honorable mentions. Richie Melby, MTN Sports.